Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Having yourselves a great night, great evening, great morning, whenever it may be that you're tuning in. I certainly appreciate you folks tuning in as we try to figure out what's going on with the tropics. Um, things are, are heating up. It's pretty active out there as I speak, but there's really only one storm right now, right? And that's Franklin. Franklin, um, you know, made impact on the Dominican Republic, moved north of the Dominican Republic, and now is just chilling in the southwest Atlantic and actually still moving sort of um, east right now. And if, But eventually it's going to make an abrupt turn north, and then it's going to likely, most likely, become Hurricane Franklin. And uh, as it does, it could become a pretty strong hurricane, maybe as high as a Category 2, Category 3 hurricane. And we're going to talk about Franklin in the beginning of the video. And then we're going to talk about what the chatter is all about, about something brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. And there is the potential for something to definitely get going. There is a pretty decent chance of uh, a tropical depression developing here in the next uh, few days. It really is. So we're going to talk about what's driving this. We're going to work our way through this video. And I think it's important as uh, for you guys as the audience to really understand what's driving this. Um, some people don't like that kind of stuff. Some people just want you to give them the cut and dry information. And uh, some people enjoy actually learning what's driving just the weather in general, okay, because there's a lot of factors that drive, whether it's winter weather, severe weather, the tropics. There's so many things that have to come together to really create a forecast, right? So we're going to do that for you. We're going to compare some model guidance, talk about what's driving this, what's pulling this moisture northward, and try to explain it in a way where you guys can understand. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. My videos have been struggling to, to, to really click with the algorithm lately. Not 100% sure why, but, you know, I, who knows? Either way, I um, always can can really uh, definitely just be happy that I have the foundation that my channel has. Um, and I know that we have an awesome family-like atmosphere here, and I try to not get too caught up into that. I know that um, the growth is going to continue, rather whether it's at a slow, medium, or high pace. With my channel, it's always been a slow to medium pace, so easy as she goes. So I really appreciate folks who tune in with every single video, make it part of the routine. Um, you make the time that I spend on these videos worth it, so thank you all so much for that. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, put please put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and so uh, others can do so too. I'm struggling to speak uh, tonight. I don't know why. I think I'm just really tired. I'm worn down. Uh, but uh, we're going to muscle our way through this video and try not to trip up the words too much. Franklin's right here uh, popping off some <clears throat> some pretty explosive convection shower and storm activity. As you can tell, it's uh, moving east, almost um, east-southeast, if you will. This is going to make an abrupt turn north and get close to Bermuda. We'll talk about that here in a second. And you see this massive spin right here? This was our upper trough, which is technically considered still an upper trough, but it's beginning to get pinched off. So you actually have... Uh, a pretty obvious spin on going right here, right? So this is actually helping to yank monsoonal moisture, which is down here, and it's already starting, and this is going to pull this in this general direction where you'll try to get some kind of dominant vortice, which is a spin piece of energy. Uh, does it emerge over land or the ocean or, you know, half and half? We're not sure, but eventually this could get pulled all the way into areas of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, well, we have to watch for impact on Florida, okay? But this is the feature, and we'll talk about this again. We've talked about it many times if you've been a consistent viewer with this, but this is still creating a westerly flow um, and impacting Franklin with a little bit of shear. Just It's lessening and lessening as we go in time, so this is actually helping yank this uh, to the east because it's, it's being pushed from the west and getting pushed eastward. Okay, so we still got that flow here, but this is kind of detaching, if we will, if we will, and this is actually going to just fully pinch off and become what we call um, a ULAC, which is basically just an anti-cyclone, if you will, and these sometimes 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 can get over tropical systems and actually help them breathe, if you will. We'll talk about that. We'll nerd, we'll nerd out on that when the time comes. As of now, we'll just leave it at that. Um, but let's get this back off your screen. And let's keep rolling with this. So this is the feature we'll watch. And then this is the feature that's ongoing. Okay. Updates on Franklin. We'll talk about Franklin first. It's already up to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. 
By the time we get an update here in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes from the 8 p.m. update, it could very well be a 65 mile per hour storm. Not much will change. Bermuda's still barely hanging in the cone of uncertainty. So you still need to pay attention in Bermuda. But most model guidance indicates that this is going to pass uh, just to your west um, early next week, you know, Monday into Tuesday. Okay, this could develop into a hurricane as early as uh, late Friday night. Um, you know, maybe sometime into Saturday, most likely, but it certainly could. So, um, moving east, northeast, actually, not east, southeast, and it just looks like it's moving kind of east, southeast, but technically move, moving east, northeast at eight miles per hour. So, pretty slow, uh, definitely pretty, pretty darn slow out there. Uh, we look at uh, Google, uh, we call this Zoom Earth, and it's basically a combination of Google Maps and the tropics. And I think it's one of the coolest sites out there when it comes to the tropics, but you know, this is. Uh, this is Franklin, and uh, this is a right around where the center of Franklin is. As you can tell, most of the shower and storm convection is being pushed off to the east of the center of circulation. That's because it's dealing with that westerly flow, a little bit of shear, which is kind of shearing off the western side of Franklin. But like I said, it will begin that abrupt turn north sometime tomorrow night, where it will most likely become a hurricane as early as probably Saturday morning, maybe even Friday night. And then it will be its strongest at some point, maybe the later half of the weekend into Sunday could be a 110 mile per hour category two hurricane. It goes up another five miles per hour. That's a major hurricane category three or higher. Okay. But this is the highest, basically a category two hurricane can go without becoming a category three hurricane, which is considered a major hurricane Bermuda right here. But as of now expected to pass um, west of Bermuda. Okay. We go a little bit further up, check out Nova Scotia right here. Newfoundland and uh, you guys are not in the cone of uncertainty as of now but we'll compare some model guys to show you guys what's going on but you guys could see impacts from this as early as mid to late next week so um, let's actually look at the, the G I'm sorry the European and then the GFS model with this and we keep this going and it's saying sometime a Monday morning it'll be just southwest of Bermuda which is right here 970 millibar low pressure hurricane which is about a category 2 hurricane uh, this will probably try to strengthen a little bit more. We'll see. But I think as it moves um, north and uh, northeast and I'm sorry, northwest and north of Bermuda, I think it will lose a little bit of steam, even though the euro is saying that it's going to try to strengthen even more. But as it continues to move north, I mean, you still got Tuesday evening a 965 millibar low pressure hurricane, which is, you know, pretty Pretty beefy Category 2 hurricane. We move up a little bit further north. Nova Scotia right here at the bottom of your screen. Newfoundland. And as we are getting into Wednesday afternoon, there's Nova Scotia. There's that, I mean, still Category 2, Category, uh, probably around a Category 1, Category 2 hurricane based off the Euro. It's right off the coastline of Nova Scotia. And this thing plows right into Newfoundland. Okay. As a, uh, you know, a non a 970, 975 low pressure tropical system. Now it's probably at this point losing its tropical characteristics, but you guys were impact. You guys have been impacted a lot over the last two years by tropical systems. Um, this one can do it again. We'll continue to keep you guys updated up here. I don't want to leave you guys hanging just because I don't live in Canada. Um, but the latest European model says, hey, this, and you know these systems like to pick up a lot of forward speed as they move north, but the latest, um, European says you're going to see the impacts from this as early as in Newfoundland, as early as um, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and makes a landfall sometime Wednesday night. So we'll watch this. We'll get detailed the closer we get to it. Now, the GFS, Wednesday morning, kind of the same thing. A uh, pretty strong hurricane right off the coast of Nova Scotia, but it does not really affect it much. Look at that little blue popping up here. You like to see that, don't you? I know I do. Um, but this takes a little bit further of a southeast track and really clips the southeastern portion of um, of Newfoundland. Okay, I don't pretend to know all the geographical uh, features of Newfoundland, but this would this would slam the southeast portion of it with hurricane force winds, and this would be Wednesday Wednesday p.m. sometime into Wednesday night. Okay, so we need to continue to watch this. Even has another low pressure behind it. And I think this is actually, um, I think this is actually what would be Dahlia right behind it. So we need to watch this, okay? Um, I'll continue to keep you guys updated. Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, I promise. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging just because something's brewing in the Gulf. But speaking of the Gulf of Mexico, um, some of this information might change here at um, the 8 p.m. update. I'm making this, um, I'm doing this as of around, it's around 7.15 Eastern time. Another update comes out in like 30 to 45 minutes. So 
chances are that this could this potentially could become a red code red is what we joke around called in terminology in the weather world it could go from a 60 to a 70 percent chance to develop within the next seven days we'll watch that if it does this orange shade will go to a red and of course we'll get the 70 so we're watching this now i know you just saw a bunch of icons out here we're not worried about that right now we're really just focusing on folks focusing in on franklin and uh, the potential for a tropical system in the western caribbean gulf of mexico so that's really our main focus but like i said 60% chance could he get bumped up to a 70% chance in any update now of tropical development within the next um, seven days. Uh, so we look at water vapor loop. You can see that spin again. This is a different way to look at what we were just looking at in the beginning of the video. Um, you see the wider colors, wider colors. That is more moisture um, in the atmosphere. And you can see a lot of shower and storm development over Central America. You see the spin right here this uh, upper trough this is helping to like i said you know just pull a lot of moisture off the central america we call it the cag which is called central american gyrum so basically this could be a massive broad area of low pressure a lot of individual spins just ongoing out here and this could get sometimes pulled into the warm waters of the western caribbean and eventually into the gulf of mexico where we eventually you know, and you see this spin right here, this helping aiding and pulling this north. Uh, this could eventually spell trouble into this region where this eventually could develop. So that's what we watch for. That is the, uh, you know, not a cause of concern necessarily right now, but this is this is a ripe, a ripe basically ingredients for something to just suddenly get going in the Western, Western Caribbean Gulf of Mexico. We've seen this a bunch. Suddenly you go from just um, just some uh, a weak tropical depression, weak tropical storm to all of a sudden a category three, category four, four hurricane. If you can get light shear and um, the sea surface temperatures are very warm and we know the sea surface temperatures are very warm and to speak on that, uh, they are. If you hear me stopping my, my dogs barking like crazy right here in my, my left ear here and uh, sometimes it can be highly distracting. <laughs> so you look at sea surface temperatures, guys, and this is in Celsius, I know, um, but 29, 30 degrees Celsius is, just think of that as the mid uh, the mid 80s in Fahrenheit. Once you get into 31, 32 degrees Celsius, starting to get to the upper 80s. So sea surface temperatures, it's rocket fuel. We, we know it's plenty warm enough out here for sure. We have nothing to, uh, the tropical systems have nothing to worry about as far as having plenty of warm water to deal with, that's for sure. So moving forward here, um, you you see the spin right here, right? So you got you got that spin, and it shows up well in the 200 millibar wind streams, which is remember winds in the upper level upper levels of the atmosphere, winds like 35, 40 thousand feet up in the air. So you see the spin well, right? Um, so you see the streamlines and the arrows associated with this. This is helping yanking all this moisture. I know I've said that about a million times. So eventually. Um, this continues to get pulled northward, and this is the European, and you get an L that pops up here. So it's symbolizing you got some kind of low pressure around the Yucatan Peninsula, between the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba developing. You got a, a pretty nice flow also. We call this an anticyclonic flow. So basically, you got winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere going in the opposite direction as a uh, the spin of whatever low pressure is here okay and this is centered right in the middle of this so basically these tropical systems and let me get those old ones off the screen this tropical system is uh you know trying to spin like this right which that's not trying this is this is the way they spin in the northern hemisphere okay so it's spinning like this but overhead it way up in the upper levels of the atmosphere you got a flow that's going like this around it so we call that an anti-cyclonic flow. So basically this helps to push air on the up, basically it pushes air away from the center of the storm. When it pushes air away from the center of the storm in the upper levels of the atmosphere, because remember it's going the opposite direction, it allows more air to rise and then it gets pushed or pushed away again from the center, more air rise. And your immediately thought is probably like, well, how does that help the storm system? Well, it allows for more air to rise. Remember rising air, um, rising air is a sign of more convection, okay, more shower and storm development. So it's ventilating the storm, basically, okay? We'll talk about this more maybe deeper in the deep in the hurricane season when there's a better example of it. So basically, I guess what I'm saying is if you can get, if there wasn't land here, 
I think that this system would, would try to strengthen a good bit better. Okay, but there's a lot of land interfering with a rel relatively weak tropical system at this point right in here. There's no dominant vortice into here at all either. So uh, it's basically just a sloppy tropical system. Now eventually, it'll find that current west and you get some kind of upper trough that digs down right here and it's going to pull this LUC here north. So around Monday afternoon, getting into Tuesday morning and all of a sudden that L, that number's dropping too. That means it's a, it's a strengthening storm system. It's getting pulled northward, northeastward. And then you have a land falling weak category one hurricane probably into the Big Bend areas of Florida sometime Wednesday morning. Okay, now I don't, as of now, as of now, it looks like this storm might deal, deal with a little bit of shear on the north side of the storm. So this might prevent rapid strengthening, kind of like what Ian did in the same area, right? Right after, right after it came off the um, kind of northern and western coastline of uh, Cuba, you had that rapid intensification, right? So as of now, no real models show that, but we still got to watch because there's been a lot of cases where models didn't show that and then all of a sudden it happened. Right, so this gets yanked northward and then, uh, yeah, makes a landfall. So, yeah, another way to look at this is you have basically there's the spin. This is a, this is uh, trying to become a dominant vortice. This is a great example of a dominant vortice that that is, um, you know, Hurricane Franklin out here. So, this is a more broad area of a vortice, right? It's not really tight, but as it continues to get over land, this becomes more organized and then it gets that darker shade of orange and then red. And then this is becoming a full fledged, strong tropical storm, low end hurricane and making landfall. Okay. Uh, we look at the latest model guys and we kind of already looked at the Euro, but I'll show it anyways. Again, uh, this shows the moisture associated with it. it makes landfalls about a 989 millibar low pressure sometime in the wee hours of the morning, Wednesday morning next week. Okay. That's what the Euro says. That's not what I'm saying is a forecast. That's what the Euro is saying, makes that landfall right there. And then it continues to cross North Florida and then actually tries to strengthen again and potentially could scrape the South Carolina coastline. It's something we got to watch. Okay. The GFS, all the GFS does is bring a bunch of moisture into Florida. It doesn't develop any kind of tropical system. It brings a lot of tropical moisture into Florida, but the GFS continues to say, no, nada, this is not going to happen. But the Canadian, the icon, the Canadian model, uh, makes a landfall a little bit further north into the uh, Big Bend areas of Florida as, you know, uh, the, basically about a 992, 993 millibar low pressure tropical storm, okay, and brings a lot more moisture into Georgia and then South Carolina. Look at this right in the coastline. So uh, this would bring tropical storm for, force conditions into North Florida, Southeast Georgia, the coastline of South Carolina, and um, North Carolina potentially. So that, that is something we need to watch too. That's the Canadian model. And then we look at the icon model only goes out 120 hours and it indicates um, a very weak tropical system eyeing down the western coast of Florida. So definitely nothing too crazy there. But we look at the European ensemble and I can tell you this shifted a little bit west today, which would, wouldn't be good. That means this would probably hang out in the Gulf a little bit longer. Um, but there's a lot more members than there was a couple runs ago. Uh, so confidence is certainly growing that we're going to have a tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico. And then you look at the European ensemble probability of a tropical depression. You see this orange here that is saying there is basically a about an 80 to 90 percent chance that we're going to get some kind of tropical system in uh, the south southeast Gulf, Gulf of Mexico sometime next week. So continue to tune in. Um, the video came off sloppy. Maybe more sloppier in this morning and last night's video. I apologize. A little bit tired, guys, uh, but we'll muscle through it. I'll continue to update you guys on this. Stay tuned. We'll give you guys the, uh, the most updated information. And uh, you guys stay safe. God bless.